Hey, Gold Creek Woodenville, we are in week two of Forge the Future, and I'm standing on site on one of the reasons why we're in this series. Forge the Future is um, our goal of raising $2.3 million over the course of the next two years because we need to create more space for not only the families that are here, but the families who have yet to come here to Gold Creek Woodenville. If you're new to the church, uh, we've experienced some pretty radical growth in the last three years. We've actually filled up our building already. Uh, we just added a third service, which has filled up as well. And we're in a great place to continue to reach people. Uh, one of the ways that we need to continue to grow and allow more space is by allowing our junior high to have a space on Sunday morning. Right now, our junior high is uh, in two of our kids' classrooms on Sunday morning. And not only are they changing a kid's classroom over to try and work for junior high, they're just out of space. And so over to my right is the back of our building. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna purchase a permanent youth building, a portable that we're gonna put over there where junior hires can be on a sunny morning where it'll be much more efficient for them to do junior high things and reach junior high kids. By doing that, we're gonna be able to actually open up two additional kids' classrooms, which we desperately need on a Sunday morning too. So it's gonna immediately, for us here at the church, uh, create more space, be, allow us to reach more of our kids and our youth that we need. The second thing we're gonna do with the money is we wanna create more signage. Uh, whether or not we're officially the Costco church or not, people drive by and they say, man, I came to your church because I was on my way to Costco and I saw you guys. And so we know we have signage that we've put with banners and everything else when people are driving north to south on Highway 9. We wanna create a monument sign, which would be a permanent sign on our Maltby Road side. And that's gonna run east to west. And not only is that gonna tell people about who we are, Gold Creek, but then also it's gonna help us advertise Kids of the Creek Preschool that meets here during the week as well. The last thing we wanna do with our money is we wanna to begin to pay down our second mortgage. Uh, we took a second mortgage and we did it through our Symbol Holdings, if you're familiar with that. And we did that to complete and finish this amazing building and church that we're in today. Uh, there is no way we could have gotten where we're at and got this building up without that. Now we're at the place as a church where we want to be able to leverage any opportunity that God lays in front of us, whether that's reaching more people immediately here for Woodenville or even reaching people in a new area. And right now we just can't do that. And so part of our step of continuing to reach our people through Forge the, the Future is beginning to pay down our secondary mortgage so that we can leverage all of the, uh, the beautiful blessing that God's given us here at, at Woodenville. That's gonna be able to, to do that for us in a big way. And so with Forge the Future, when we raise $2.3 million, we're gonna be able to create space for our youth and our kids ministry back here. We're gonna be able to add additional signage for people driving by. And then we're gonna be able to begin to pay down our mortgage so that we can reach more people that aren't here yet. Uh, what I've always known every single step of the way through this church build process is that people have sacrificed with us. And every time there's been a sacrifice, God has blessed us. And so I wanna invite you to begin to sacrifice with me and my family as we forge the future. And I'm excited to see what God does in the next two years. Hey, we want to welcome you guys. We're excited you're here with us. Uh, that's just a taste of all the fun that's going on here right now at Gold Creek Woodenville. I'm Pastor Kyle, the associate pastor here. And hey, I'd love to talk about something. You know, in the, in the last couple of weeks, we've talked about this idea, this moment right now where we where we receive our tithes and offerings as a church. We've talked about it being this old school idea, this Thing that was given to us in like one of the oldest parts of the Old Testament, one of the oldest parts of, of even human history. And, and we talked how old school it is, but it's funny, I found some stuff in the New Testament, a little less old school, that talks about it. The, the Old Testament talks about like the, a little bit of the why. And then in the New Testament, it gave like, it gave the church a specific how. It's funny, in the book of First, First Corinthians, um, which you gotta think of this area this time, in 1 Corinthians, Paul, who you're going to hear about more later in, in the service, 
was talking to one of the first churches in this time where it, this is after Jesus died on the cross, rose again, ascended into heaven. This is like one of the very first churches. And Paul's writing to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Um, the church in Corinth had a question about giving, and so he's answering it. He says, now regarding your question about the money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, you should follow the same procedure I gave to the church in Galatia. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside the portion of the money that you have earned. And it's so funny that right now, 2,000 years later, we meet together on the first day of each week on Sunday, bringing together along with our praises and, and our open hearts to what God's going to say to us today. But we come together with what we are going to give to God, what we're going to trust God with um, in a physical and, and monetary way so that he can take care of his people. So he can take care of the people of the church and take care of the people in our community. All that to say that, man, if you've been if you've been giving with us lately, or if you've been even especially tithing, which means giving 10% of what you earn, man, you are living biblically. We're so excited about that. And we're so grateful for that. Um, if that's something you, you haven't been doing, like without shame, I want you to just invite you to join us. Is Giving is a way that you can really see how God works uh, through how he changes your heart. And we try to make it easy for you to take that step. You can do it by going on our app. You can set it up recurring. You can go on our website. You can text give to the number you can see on the screen just to get sent the link so you don't have to worry about it too hard. Or we have an offering box in the back. Would you guys pray with me this morning as we get ready for service? Heavenly Father, we're so excited. Uh, we're in in anticipation, waiting for how you're going to speak to us, Lord, today, how we can feel your presence, how we can understand you in a deeper and better way as we continue to sing about you, as we continue to talk about you, and as we continue to try to bring our hearts ever closer to you. God, we love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, good morning, Gold Creek. My name's Brian. If this is your first time to church, just want to say welcome. I'm glad you're here. You're joining us at a perfect time because this series is all about the future of our church, where we're going and what we're trying to do. Uh, it's also a really great time to join us because you're going to see our church at our best. You're going to see people be sacrificial. And really what I'm hoping and praying for is um, achieving the goals that we want to do. But today, what I want to do is talk about trusting God. Now, trusting God is important because it's the first step of faith. But the problem for all of us is it's hard to trust God, and it's hard to trust when you've experienced and lost faith in systems, right? We lose faith in systems because of people we've experienced, experienced and organizations we've experienced. I'll give you an example of losing faith in a system. Okay, so... Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went out with my kids, uh, the Snowmish River, the salmon are running in the river, and uh, I caught a uh, silver salmon or a coho with my kids. It was super fun. But I need you to know, that's the only fish. That's the one picture of the only fish that I caught. And the funny thing about that is that I've been lied to. The system has failed me. Because people have told me over the last couple weeks, the river's hot. It's full of fish. There's limits every day. And so I've been getting out there with my family and my friends and to no avail. In fact, last, last uh, Friday, I went out with my buddy. Friday and Saturdays are my days off, so I planned out my Friday. I went out earlier than everybody. I beat all the guides down the river. I got to the one spot where all the guides fished. I used the same gear as the guides, and I fished for like seven straight hours, and I caught nothing. <laughs> In fact, all the guide boats came down to the same spot I was. I'm fishing the same holes. You hear these, woohoo, these hoops and hollers from all the guide boats because they're catching fish. And I stop, and I look at all of them, and I think, you're all dead to me. <laughs> I hate all you. I'm not celebrating your successes. I hate you for it, right? 
The system has lied to me because they said if I fish this way and use this thing and go to this place, I will be successful. It hasn't happened. The reality is we view God in the same way. We've experienced a broken system of faith, right? Maybe you had a really weird, adverse experience to a church earlier in your life. Maybe you've experienced a real cruddy person who called themselves a Christian, right? And you're thinking, this doesn't match up the faith in God that I want. So today what we want to do is we want to talk about trust. We want to talk about trusting God in our steps. And here's where we're going to be, the book of Acts. What you need to know about the book of Acts, the book of Acts itself is in the New Testament of the Bible. And this book speaks directly to the new church which was being established immediately after Jesus died, resurrected from the dead, and then ascended into heaven. So everything they talk about church is kind of perfect because here we are talking about our church and everything we hope to do. We're going to be in Acts chapter 9. It says this. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. He said, Ananias, yes, the Lord. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on State Street and ask that man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias, that's you, come and place your hands on him and restore his sight. So the first thing, when it begins a building a posture of trust with God, what you need to know is you got to start by listening to God's voice. But the problem is, Hearing God's voice is hard. Maybe for you, you say, I've never heard God's voice. I don't even know what God is, right? Maybe you're a mature Christian here. You're like, boy, it's been really hard for me. Well, the first thing you got to know is here's Paul trying, or here is Ananias having to go talk to Paul, and he's pretty scared of what he thinks God is speaking to him. Now, the hard thing about us hearing God is sometimes we have too much noise in our lives. I found this this week online. It was pretty funny says, Lord, why do I feel so distant from you? And the Lord says, well, you're on Instagram all day. (laughs) Maybe that's why. I think that's a good descriptor for us. We have so much noise, and we are very rarely silent in our lives. I wake up, first thing I do, I go out and I work out. I have a little garage gym, but I go down to the gym. The first thing I do, I turn on the speaker, and I sync it to my, my Spotify playlist, and I start listening to music. Then I get into the car, and I immediately start listening to a podcast. And then from the podcast, I'll switch over to the audio book. And then I'm making phone calls. Then I get home, and I'm with my kids. Put the kids to bed. Then I'm talking with Kristen. And before I know it, I'm sleeping. I have zero silence in my life. Now, I've done it that way myself. Silence is hard for me. Yet it's in the silence God speaks. It's important that we listen to God. So I want to try and talk through how God speaks to us today. What does God's voice sound like? Well, the first thing is I think God's voice can sound like a profound thought. In one moment where it's this distinct thought that shakes you to your core and you know that it's different from everything else. I'll give you an example. Uh, This is the moment I'm driving down Highway 9. At the time, we didn't have a building. We didn't have even this property. It was just two old, cruddy buildings on the side of the road. I come to that stoplight, and in that moment, I have this profound thought where I feel like God said, this property will be the church. And now sitting here today, I think, man, how amazing is that? But in that moment, I knew that I knew that I felt like God was saying something. Sometimes God speaks to our emotions. And emotions are weird because, right, emotions can lie to us. But I think God speaks to our emotions and our feelings through a conviction. It'll be a conviction like, you shouldn't do this thing, right? You shouldn't talk to a person that way. Or a conviction could be like, you need to go and share your faith with this person. And it might not be comfortable. The most important thing you need to know, when God speaks to you, it will always be kingdom-focused. It will never be selfish and it will never be sinful. So when God speaks to you, you gotta know it'll be lining up with the kingdom of God. Here's another thing God spoke to me for. There was a really hard season for me where uh, people were saying some things that were wrong about me, but I knew in that moment I had to take the high road and not defend myself. You've probably been in a situation like that. You gotta take the high road. You can't say anything. I was in 
immense emotional anguish and nobody knew. And in that moment, I was doing what I always did. I, go, I read through the one-year Bible every year, no matter what. And just so happens, that morning, in that moment, there was a verse in Psalms where it said, God will make your innocence radiate like the noonday sun. It was this moment in time where God knew that I needed to hear it. Like I heard God's voice. But here's the most important thing you need to know about God's voice. God's voice will never be different from the scriptures. Like what you hear from God has to be congruent from the scriptures, otherwise it's what I call bad pizza. Bad pizza could be this. You have a really, you have like really gross pizza. Maybe it's like old little Caesars, right? You eat a lot of it. You go to bed, you have a crazy dream about unicorns, Jesus, and machine guns. And you're like, I have a dream, and this is what God's calling me and my family to. And I'd be like, maybe it's a bad, maybe it's bad pizza. That's not maybe what God is, because the scriptures don't talk about Jesus, machine guns, and unicorns. Right? There's an important thing. When God speaks to you, that will be congruent with the scripture because we don't believe the Bible to be just a, a book of text or even just a sacred scripture. We believe it to be the living and active word of God. And so if it's the word of God, God's word is not going to be opposite of his other word, which is in the scripture. You need to know our entire faith on Jesus is based on this book. If we don't have this book, we really don't have a foundation of faith. I'll give you an example of how it hasn't happened. It's a true story. A few years ago, a guy came to his wife in our church. They have a family with kids. He said, I feel like God's telling me we need to add one more wife into our family. And obviously his wife was upset, right? And, she, and then he comes to me and says, hey, Brian, I, really, I know it sounds weird, but God's been really telling me we can add another wife into the family. And I said, hey, dude, that's not God. Because the scripture doesn't say that. Right? Like, like these are important moments when we have to hear God's voice. God speaks through everything. He speaks through a thought. He speaks through an emotion. He speaks through a dream. He can speak any way he wants to you, but it will never be in opposition to the written scripture. This is God's word. This is God's voice. And so we compare these things to what he's doing. Acts chapter 9, verse 13 goes on, it says this. Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. So here's Ananias. He's having to process what God's telling him, right? And what I love about that is nothing is wrong with asking questions and clarifying what you've heard when it comes to God. What I love about Jesus and Christianity is that I don't have to defend the Bible. It's the most scrutinized book in the world. More and more as technology and archaeology comes out, it proves what we believe when it comes to the scriptures. I don't have to uh, defend Jesus because Jesus, if the truth really is the truth, the truth will always come out. And so like I can trust this. You can process this. That's why we say we give space for people to process their spirituality here. What that means is you don't have to believe what I believe this morning. It doesn't change the fact that I believe this is truth. That Jesus, there's only one Jesus. Now, it's okay if you process that, right? That's who we are. That's what I love about church. But this is an important part. Here's Ananias. He's like, God's calling me to go to a murderer's house and to lay my hands on this guy and pray for him. Imagine if like you're walking in and like you're thinking, I'm going to get stabbed by this dude. He's a murderer. Like he spent his days prior to this moment killing Christians. It's okay to process what God's telling you. <laughs> right? Like I feel like that's part of our faith step. You know, this last week, uh, I, hand out, I handed out commitment cards and I asked people to pray about it. This is something that I think you guys are probably processing and it's a great illustration and example of how we process. What is God saying to me, right? I want to bring more clarification to it this week. So if you didn't know, starting last week, we kicked off our series called Forge the Future. For us as a church, it's actually been about almost a year, 10 months in planning and preparation. 
Our goal is to raise $2.3 million. And every single dollar of that is gonna go to those three things that you saw in the video. We wanna put another building in the back for our youth ministry, opening up space for our kids. We're gonna do signage outside, a big monument sign, and we're gonna begin to pay down debt so we can do big ministry here at the church. But for us to do this, it's gonna take literally everybody to do it together. It's gonna be one of those moments where you have 200 Amish guys lifting up one barn, right? It's gonna be a every family participation moment. But what I know is, if we all do this over the next two years, it will make such a fundamental impact, it'll be like a decade impact for our church. And so, here's how I wanna break it down, because I know it can be a little confusing, is the first box right behind me is the current annual giving. That's just a starting place for you to understand what you're already giving to the church. So if you're tithing or giving an amount, you'd write it there just so you know where you start. And maybe you aren't giving anything yet. Maybe the first step would be awesome of just saying, I'm gonna start choosing to tithe over the next two years and this is gonna be a massive impact for my family and for the church. Um, the increased annual giving is gonna be one of the ways that we're trying to actually fulfill our commitment of building and signage and debt. Um, and actually, the way we're going to do that is through our increased annual giving and actually the gift out of the stored assets at the bottom because our current annual giving is what it takes just for us to pull off and continue to pull off Sunday morning every Sunday. So what you do is you'd fill out your current annual giving and maybe it means that you're going to give 5% over, over your tithe over the next two years. I had, I had one person who said, I'm going to double my tithe for the next two years. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You're gonna then plus those two things together. You're gonna times that by two and you're gonna get your overall commitment, what you're currently giving and what you're choosing to maybe give on top of that over two years. Because this is something that we're gonna have to do not as a one-time thing like God can was in the past if you're familiar with that, with that but rather something that we're committing over a long term that we can do together. And then this box at the bottom is called a gift out of a stored asset. All that means is there's another way that we can fulfill the building and our signage. It's gonna be uh, something like, first off, Semble. If you are familiar with our Semble holdings, uh, you know that that was our pre-building season, and now we've had people that have actually committed to already give their Semble. We've had people said, our Forge the Future commitment is we're giving and donating all of our Semble that we invested. And what's cool about that is it's just like a regular donation, it'll be dollar for dollar. Another way that people give out of stored assets is stock holdings. The fun and cool way about giving to church with stocks is when you donate a stock to a nonprofit, you don't pay any capital gains tax. So you really give dollar for dollar what you would not be able to do outside of that. So that's an option. Another option would be even like a bonus. If you have a bonus that you know you're going to get or hopefully get in the next year, you would commit, I'm going to give a percentage of that or even over the next two years, this is what I hope to do. And by that, it's our increased annual giving and our gift out of our stored assets over and above our tithe. That's how we hope to achieve what we want to do for our church. And then over those two years, you're going to see that amount right there. Now, you need to know Gold Creek. We believe in transparency here at the church. Um, every dollar goes to the church and the ministry that you're doing. You need to know for me as well, I have always told our church, I'm never gonna ask our church to do something I haven't already done myself with my wife and I. So you need to know, we're gonna lead the way. Um, nine months ago when we started down this process for Forge the Future, on the backside of just thinking and praying about it, uh, Kristen and I knew before this happens, we have to be willing to tell our church that we're in before they're in. And so two years ago, Chris and I were, or two years ago, we started actually saving up because we want to do a remodel for our house. And when this happened, we prayed about it. We processed it, like you guys probably are. And we committed, we're going to give all of our money that we've saved for the last two years from our remodel to this. And the reason why I'm telling you this is only because you got to know I'm in. And you guys got to know we're a transparency church that uh, as we do this, our goal is greater than ourselves and myself. Our goal is for my kids that are going through our kids' ministry and youth ministry. Uh, I know this is an important step that we're going to take. And every step of the way when we've done this, God's provided in a supernatural way. 
And as these steps happen, we get to watch other people who take steps for the first time and see how God comes out. So that's what I'm praying for. And maybe this is a huge processing step for you. Maybe you're new to the church. You're like, they're talking about money the first day I'm here. This is a cool thing of like, what's God saying, right? What I love about God is he speaks to all of us in our own time. And one of the ways you can do is just pray, Lord, what does it look like for me to participate? Acts chapter nine goes on, it says this. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and he was immediately baptized. Here's the next step with really trusting God. You gotta show courage and obey And what I would say in parentheses, when it's scary. Because God's never going to call you to do something that makes you feel comfortable. He's going to call you to do something that's really uncomfortable. I'll give you an example. Uh, A couple weeks ago, the Lord blessed me with a broken molar. Right? I was like, Lord, thank you so much. Right? Now, the cool thing is, is uh, one of my friends is my dentist. I love to see my friend. I don't like to see him in his workplace all the time. Right? And so I broke my tooth. I have to go there. And they're grinding down, right? They got to grind down the tooth and they put a cap on it. That's what a crown is. And uh, when I'm there, the hygienist comes in and, uh, you know, it always, they always ask, hey, what do you do? And like, I'm always like, oh, I'm a pastor, right? And like sometimes the conversation stop, right? And I let it be, well, for whatever reason, this was the time I felt like I need to talk to this person. So I asked her, I said, are you religious? And she was kind of taken back, but then we started to have this conversation, and she's like, well, you know, I um, don't go to church, but I believe, and I'm just looking for a church, and I'm going to move up to Bothell, and I'm like, I know a good church by Bothell. This is amazing. And what I know is, right, I'm just as scared as you guys are sometimes to share my faith. But when the Holy Spirit speaks, and he convicts you, like, you got to talk to this guy or this person in front of you. God's going to call you to do hard things. He's not going to call you to do things you can do on your own. God's going to make you do things where you have to trust him. So that's what I did. I encouraged her. I hope one day she comes to church. But I think more that's important is like, am I going to obey when God calls me to do something? Am I just going to say yes? Right? And I love that today, I know we have lots of new people in our church. We have people from all different faith backgrounds, people that are non-believers. I think about you all the time, and I think, man, this is your first time here today. Maybe you're scared being at church, but you're here because you felt this deeper calling inside. Right? You know that what you have is not what you want. Well, I need you to know your courage step today might be just saying yes to God. Right? Your biggest step is to say, you know what, I don't know if I can trust, but I'm going to choose to take this big step to believe that Jesus really did die for me and that he is God and that I can trust him with my future. And if you're a spiritual vet, if you've been around the block with Christianity, you, know, you need to know growing spiritually is always taking bigger risks. Right? If you're in like just a real comfortable season and you're like, this is good, I would challenge you, maybe you need to ask God what your next faith step is. Because God doesn't call us into safety. God calls us into risk. That risk makes us trust. God wants us to trust him. And what we trust and what we risk will always be advancing the kingdom of God, never about us. And so here's what I love. And I love here Ananias comes in, like he takes this giant risk. He goes into Paul. He prays for Paul or Saul scales fall off his eyes. He sees a modern day miracle. Then he gets baptized immediately. One of the things you need to know about Gold Creek, we love baptisms. Here's one of our pictures. Uh, I love these moments because these are moments where people become public with their faith, right? It's one thing to say yes to God. It's another thing to say yes to God publicly with everybody watching you. And I love it because we do baptisms right here. You get out of the baptism tank immediately. You write your name on the God can wall. My name's on the God can wall because I got baptized. And it's this moment to say, I'm all in. And maybe for you, maybe you got baptized as a child, as an infant. 
uh, as a young child, and you want to do as an, as an adult, maybe you've never been baptized, uh, this is your moment. We're going to do them at the end of the month, and I want to challenge you. This is maybe your courage step faith moment. You're going to be baptized. You can sign up for it on the website. You just go to the next steps, and you'll see baptism right there. Acts chapter 9 goes on. It says this. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Right? Last step of really trusting is being thankful when God moves. Again, they're having this moment where like, last week Saul was killing Christians, this week he's preaching the gospel to people. And it was like a, a mind bender. They couldn't, we, they couldn't comprehend that this is the same guy. Well, sometimes you just got to be thankful when God moves, right? When God does things, they're not going to make sense a lot of the times. I love that. And you need to know every single little situation that you experience with God builds faith for your next step. Faith is like compounding interest. The little faith you have here will build so you can remember when you take your next step, you're going to say, God met me here, so I know I can trust him here. And that's what Paul, who was Saul, this story becomes. It's like this small thing to the next big thing, and you can trust that, boy, I'm scared about what God's calling me now, but I know that he's met me here. Do you remember your last defining faith moment? Right, that like compounding interest moment where you saw God move and you know. Uh, for me, it was in the middle of uh, COVID for me where uh, I was just freaking out. I had more anxiety than I ever had just because we're in the middle of the building process. We're trying to raise money to get the building up. Uh, and I really, uh, I started seeing a counselor. Now, but the funny thing is how it all came to be. Uh, since then, I've had Sam, my counselor, come to church. He actually helped me preach a message and we talked about anxiety. But if you would have had somebody tell me, Brian, you should go to counseling, I would have said, you need to go pound sand. Right? I, I, was, I was no, right? I'm that guy. If you tell me to do something, I'm going to do the opposite. To my own detriment. That's just how my brain works. But how it happened was in that moment, I was having coffee with my friend Sean, who's also a senior pastor, and we're talking about ministry. We're talking about all these stresses. And he said, man, my counselor, um, Sam, has helped me so much. And it was in that moment, God like cracked this door to me. Because prior to this, I referred everybody else to counseling because they were in crisis, but I didn't have like a crisis. I just was really stressed out and anxious about all these things. Well, I realized, you know, God uses counselors for normal things, not just crisis all the time. So this moment comes up and I, Sean's talking to me about him. And I remember after this conversation, I knew like I had to call this guy, but I was so scared. I felt like I was naked. I'm like, can I have his number? And I was like, you know, I was so nervous. And what ended up happening is I called Sam, and Sam changed my life. Two and a half years later, I stand a better man and follower of Jesus because I saw this guy. Now, here's the important part of this story, is that it was in the perfect moment, by the perfect person, at the perfect time. That's not a coincidence. That's God who knows me, he knows what's stressing me out and what's troubling me. He provided the right thing at the right moment at the right time. These are these compounding faith moments where we can trust God. You need to know when God moves, you need to write it down, you need to celebrate it, and you got to remember it. We are very quick to forget about what God does in our lives. And when God moves... For it to be compounding interest, you got to write it down, you got to celebrate it, and you got to remember it. Our key takeaway is this. Is my posture toward God? Yes. Right? We give lots of space for people to figure out what they believe, but at the end of the day, which way are you leaning? Are you leaning toward Jesus or are you leaning away? Right? You cannot have all your ducks in a row, but you can be leaning toward God. You got to be, are you willing to just say yes to God, even though it's risky and doesn't make sense to your mind right now? What I love about what the scriptures say, because we can trust the scriptures, Deuteronomy 31 says, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
And if Jesus says this, if the scriptures say it over and over and over again, you can trust it. So with the faith step that God's calling you to do today, you need to know you can trust God in that. So does your posture show your priority? Are you spending time trying to read the Bible? Right? Are you doing devotions? Are you in a group even though you might have not, you don't have the time? Right? Have you made a commitment to Jesus and just say yes? Do you need to talk to somebody that you know you just got to talk to and share your faith with? Do you need to sacrifice, commit to something with Forge the Future? Do you need to, if you're in recovery, do you need to like work a program? I know so many people that like go, but they don't want to work the program because it's hard. And like, this is the next step. Like, like this is where God meets us is in that. I want to give you the opportunity. Um, let's, let's stand up. We're going to worship. And I want to give you a little instructions with this song. With this song, I want you to just pray to God and ask him, what do you have for me in this season? What's the faith step where I'm supposed to trust, but I'm scared in this season? Why don't you pray, spend some time praying to God and thinking about that as we close. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me shake I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful
Hey, Heavenly Father, in the only way that you can, Lord, guide us to our next step. Guide us into a season of being closer to you, more connected with you, more in your presence, more understanding of your will for us, God. God, give us the confidence to take those steps that we need to take that bring us closer to you. God, we love you so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, we love you guys so much. On your way out, you're going to get a booklet that is going to share just a little bit more about what Gold Creek really does, not just on a Sunday, but midweek, so you guys can know what we're all about. So make sure you grab that on your way out. If you have any questions about Forge the Future or want a bracelet or one of our trifolds from last week, you can catch us in our new Forge the Future build out out there in the lobby. Other than that, we love you guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. You're dismissed. We'll see you next Sunday.